In front of me, I have the ST60 sail drive for the starboard engine of Ruby Rose 2. There are a lot of options to discuss about our boat build, and this is just one of them. And it is actually far more complicated than you would think because you even have to modify, for instance, the sail drive to take the prop to deal with the engine size, and it's complicated. Welcome back to hole number two, also known as Ruby Rose 2. Just an update on where we are today. Today is the 7th of April, 2022. What has happened since we were here last week? All the furniture is now in. All the bulkheads are in and they are just finishing off adding all those inserts. So what we'll be able to show you today is a completed structure minus the deck, which will be going on really soon. The other thing that is a big milestone for us today is the engines going in. Now, these are the 57 horsepower Yanmars with the SD60 sail drives and there's a whole process that's involved in those days. So that's for us, Getting a boat that floats to a boat that will theoretically move is a massive step for us. So today is engine day. This is going to be a really big one. We're going to have a chat with James. There's some things that they need to do to the engine before it's installed just to make sure that it sits right. We'll run through all that. And today you're going to see Ruby Rose going from a floating boat to a floating motoring boat. Anyway, enjoy this one. So here we are in hull number one, and there are lots of new things to see here. Firstly, fiberglass inserts. These are the small pieces of fiberglass that we've been seeing made in the other factory, and these constitute things like the window inserts. So let's just walk back through and we can see exactly what's going on. So we've got window inserts here, no longer raw fiberglass. Now these are not bonded in yet, but they are absolutely kind of like in place. So you can see Aside from like the fabric coverings that are going to be here, you can see what this boat is going to look like. And then moving further back, again, as we get to the cabin, you can see that we've now got this insert in place. So what we've now got, aside from the need for the carpentry, which we discussed in a previous episode, which is all going to build this bed out, it's becoming a cabin. And you can see that it's becoming a cabin. Let's move on to see what's going on elsewhere. So this is the starboard hull Ruby Rose 2. Lots of things happened in the last week. We now have this full set of fiberglass air conditioning ducts. And I kind of thought when I first saw these, they're pretty rough on the outside, but actually completely smoothed inside. So the actual, the gel coat is on the inside. All right. We've also seen, and we've talked about this in previous episodes, these small inserts that are just made in the factory next door. I think this actually forms part of the steps down. So all of these inserts are in and they are starting to put the smaller inserts in forward. So looking through here, We've got this insert to be fitted. They've got all the window inserts that they've just put into hole one, ready for hole two. I think the last week, we last time we filmed it, they were actually installing this. Yeah. And now it's been put in. The fact that it's all blue means it has all been polished. Yeah. And the fact that it's covered in cardboard and tape means that it's all been polished. So all this area, everything that I've got here, polished and finished. And there is a guy in that locker who's just like <laughs> crouching down. So I'm gonna let him get on with his job. In front of me, I have the ST60 sail drive for the starboard engine of Ruby Rose 2. And I really want to dive in depth with you today and discuss our specifications with Mike and with James, because there are a lot of options to discuss about our boat build. And this is just one of them. And it is actually far more complicated than you would think, because you even have to modify, for instance, the sail drive to take the prop to deal with the engine size and it's complicated. So welcome to one of our massive milestone events. Today, we are installing the engines, but as we previously discussed, we need to do a little bit of work beforehand. We have James here. James, you will recognize the 1370 production manager, and Mr. Ha, yep. and come on. The sail drive, when it comes to us, comes in what they call a Z configuration. So literally prop at the back, engine at the front. Yep which is what you typically would see. We're going to do now is turn it into a C configuration. So engine down and back under the engine again. Okay. Because we're going to reverse the engines. Yeah. So it's a pretty simple operation. There's eight bolts that we have to remove. Then we literally just rotate it 180 degrees and put the bolts back in. Okay, so there's no oil in this at all? There is oil in it, yes. This comes pre-supplied with oil ready to go. It's got a fairly heavy duty rubber seal on here. So right. we very carefully rotate it. We don't ah, spill one drop of oil. We don't pull it all out. We don't pull it out. We just rotate it on itself. That's what I would have done. Just put it all out and made yeah. a bloody mess. <laughs> and we'll make a mess because there's a lot of oil in there. Yeah. 
The normal standard length would be from here to here. Yep. So to get the longer leg, what they do is they add an extension and it has a slightly longer shaft. The 57 horsepower has a longer leg yep. just to deal with Because the... we've got a bigger prop, bigger prop. we need it. to get the hull clearance. Yep. Uh, we're going to get it further down. Yep. We also change the ratio. So but to go to a bigger prop, we've got to go to a higher ratio to get a slower turning prop to make it more efficient. So we've got to extend the leg to compensate for all Can that. Can I throw a curveball question at you? You're dropping the drive leg to get a bigger prop. Is it just to make it physically fit or is there an issue with like cavitation or noise? Sure. Yeah, no, all of those things. All of the above. Yeah. Okay, yeah. If you're too close to the hull, you get this yeah, throbbing noise, yeah. the vibration and you get cavitation yeah. issues. Yeah, okay. So it's important to get, they say about 10% from the prop diameter. Yep. I like more than that. I don't think it's enough, but yeah. um, we've got about, from memory, I think it's like 130 millimeter or something okay. from the tip to the underside of the hull, which yeah. is way over, it's like 15 or 20%. You actually do consider cavitation and noise from the prop. Yeah, yeah so look. Yeah, thanks for doing that. The thing about it is, and we've lived on board for so long now, it only takes a small, like a bit of plastic caught around one prop blade. It transfers so much noise. So yeah, if you are working with cavitation or to reduce cavitation and noise, it's pretty, pretty interesting. These bolts are quite long. So obviously if you have the short leg, yep. the bolts are, I think they're about inch and a half to two inches long. So with the extended length, they put in a longer bolt. So when these come out, you'll see they're about okay. four to five inches long. So it's important, I guess, that if you're doing, I mean, what you, this is not the sort of maintenance I don't think I'd you ever would, do. No, no. But to make sure that you've got, you're using a Yanmar supplier that understands what drive leg you've got. Because yep. we've been sent the wrong bolt size before, and it's like, all right, when you've couriered something from France or from England, and then they're like, oh, it's the wrong one. Yeah, so you can see the bolts here. Yep. So you can see it's a pretty long bolt. Yep. So that's got to go all the way from here down into the, the body of the okay. frame down below. So if we didn't have the extension, it's only going to be about this long. And that's it. That's your done. Well, yeah, we've got to we usually yeah, got to rig yeah. a little bit to get those threads aligned. So typically what we do here, I usually get Mr. Sahar to run around. He'll tighten the bolts and then I'll take the wrench and I'll just double check them all. Do they need to be torqued? So I checked with Yanmar, they don't specify a torque. They have general torque ratings for their bolts, but on these ones they don't specify. Just don't tear the arse out of it. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, had we lifted that off, we'd have a horrible mess. Oil everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> did you learn that the hard way? Or yes. <laughs> First one, we uh, weren't quite sure, so we drained the oil. Yeah, yeah. And then we took it apart and then we realized, well, this is because that's what the manual says to do. And then we realized it's, this is crazy. Why do we need to go to all this when it's, it's that simple? Because you've got to realign the spline and everything if you take it apart. This way, I don't have to align anything. And there's no oil, which then no, gets everywhere. It's clean. <laughs> no, it looks great. Thank you. This is what they call the ST60 yep. model, which is the same one for the 40 horse and the 57. Okay, so same, same leg. So the only thing changes the engine. Yes. And it, well, obviously the ratio and the leg length, but uh, yep. they're customized for that combination. There's a few things that Yanmar have done in recent years to improve these. So as we spoke about earlier, oil change in the gearbox has been a horrible job because the only way you could do it was you have to drain from the bottom. And the only way you can do that is you got to haul out, which is an expensive operation yep. in itself. Plus and also salt water, stainless steel screw, aluminium drive leg. Yep don't maintain it properly yeah. and it's and yeah, sometimes it the timing just doesn't work for you Absolutely, so yeah so they've added in this tube which now allows you to draw out the oil and you can use one of those hand pump devices i mean there's quite a few on the market now and you can draw all the oil out to change so that's a, that's been a really big plus so important because we actually had a sail drive on our boat before ruby rose and then we have obviously we had a shaft drive on ruby rose but importantly the Yanmar maintenance schedule yeah. on our last boat needs uh, an oil change of the gearbox after like 25 or 50 hours, isn't it? So it's really yes, short. So the engine combinations we got, both the engine and gearbox are the same hour changes. So yep. you do them all at the same time. So the initial one is 50 hours. So yep. it's your break-in period. Yes. And then it's every 250 hours or one year, I think it is. There's a time and hour. But the 50 hours was always a problem because it was never when you wanted to haul out. Yeah. And also be aware that I think to maintain the warranty, 
you have to get a Yanmar accredited engineer to the first service, I believe. I'm probably right, yeah. So, you know, you do need to make sure that after 50 hours of sailing, you've got a Yanmar engineer to get the oil changed. So, another thing that changed on these is this valve here. So, intake is via these holes, yep. and there's another large hole on the back here. Yep. Comes up the leg, and this is basically your seacock. So your raw water. This is raw water for the engine. So this will then go to your filter and then straight to the pump on the motor. Earlier versions of these had a bronze valve with a T-handle on them that you would wind in and out. Yeah. And they were notorious for the threads seizing. They've now got rid of that and we're now down to a stainless ball valve. So this is a much better system. We um, like a stainless ball valve. Part of the problem is that it's kind of hidden away in the engine room on the sail drive. Yep. People don't think about it. So it never gets exercised and therefore it just wants to seize up. So it's kind of important to know where it is to find it yep. and know that you can exercise it occasionally to make sure it's operational. Which is why two things. Firstly, we have the clipboard on Ruby Rose to kind of indicate maintenance schedules yep. and what needs to be done. Secondly, we used to use a can of lithium grease with a long Yes. And that, lithium grease for just lubricating ball valves. Yep. Not sure I'd ever thought I'd use that in a sentence while in Vietnam, but yeah, it's, it's pretty damn useful. So I think uh, Yanmar recommends to lube these once a year, so okay. you would have to pull the hose off and, and poke the lube down from this way, because yep. you can't get up, obviously, from the bottom of the leg. Okay, yeah, yeah. But uh, normally on a regular ball valve, you would do it from the outside, because you can get to it yes. easy enough. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yep. Super interesting, and then this will all marry up. There's obviously the, the yeah, clutch so plate. Yes, there's a bell housing that we have to attach onto here, yep. and that then is also for the engine. Cool, cool, cool. And then all these other parts, that looks like wiring looms. There's, there's lots of wiring looms. This is an electric drive system, so you can see when we talked the other day about the difference between an electric and a mechanical system, yep. it's a big difference. We saw the VC20 on the Seawind 1600 the other day. Yeah. It's a beautiful, it is a It's sex, nice, it's, a it's sexy really looking nice. system. And so this is part of the wiring loom that's going to be passed through to the VC20. Yeah, so some of this goes in the engine room because there's electric actuator that controls the gear chain. Yep. And the ECU, which is separate from the engine, is also the wiring harness and then some of this then goes up to the controls up at the helm, so oh, perfect. there's quite a bit in it. Thanks, James. Yep. Brilliant. Look, really appreciate your time today. I know you're super busy, but you know, just talking us through this is uh, actually really informative for us, but also for anyone that's got a Yanmar SD60 sail drive, because these are common components in many, many boats. And now we're going to move on to getting these engines installed, so let's go and get that done. Thank you. So, the guys here, what they've got, they are just installing the drive leg. So that is the sail drive, SD60, already been pre-versed. That's being dropped into the hole. So now you're gonna be able to see the drive leg going through the boat. Got the engine on the forklift, and that is now gonna be dropped in and married up, very, very slowly lifted. Like, it's super exciting, it's super hot, it's super stressful, I'm super pumped. I haven't even had more than one copy this morning. So In all fairness, despite the fact it's a 57, it doesn't overwhelm the engine compartment. There's no, a discussion. they're really not that much different in size, to be honest. And you can see immediately there's enough space to work around. Yeah. And by having a nice smooth finish on the bottom, it's easy to clean. Yep. I've had boats where you've got rough finish on the bottom, and you know they, they get dirty very easy. So this I know. I used to go with a little scrubbing brush into the build your yep. ruby rose. So here we are, the end of stage one of engine installation. Engine has been lowered in the sail drive is already in and now there's some adjustments to be made before they actually connect the sail drive or marry that up to the actual body of the engine itself there's so many things that i can see that are kind of like are different to ruby rose apart from the fact that it's a much larger engine but for instance emergency stop button that is actually really important to have that we never had that on ruby rose on ruby rose there was a button but it was actually really difficult to get to why you would need it because the thing about diesel engines is they only need air and diesel to run so it's not like if you turn the engine off in a car, it stops. Diesel engines can get into situations where they just run uncontrollably. Right. So an emergency stop, or when you're in an engine bay, I know you're not meant to, but people do actually work. I've done it hundreds of times. You work with an engine running. Cool. If you're trying to check raw water or you're trying to check something. So we do things that maybe aren't the safest because they're, they're necessitous. Lots of space around the engine bay. Also, we can see here that, you know, the level of this 
access panel and how much access we're actually going to get to our engine. So again, this yeah. forms part of that bulkhead that we talked about in a previous episode. So this is a watertight bulkhead. And then this inspection panel will obviously be like fastened on. So this forms part of like the watertight bulkhead, but impressive. It is very, very impressive. And as James said, the whole floor of this is completely flat so that things don't roll around. And also it's gel coated so that you don't end up with a rough floor, which is actually a really small point. But on Ruby Rose, the engine bay was not gel coated. It was, yeah. it was rough. And you do end up with fiberglass splinters, even though it was painted. So lots of things here that I'm super impressed about. So yeah, it's very interesting, super interesting. And so this, is the starboard side engine on Ruby Rose 2, which absolutely fantastic. Like this for us, massive milestone. So super chuffed about that. So I'm just taking a moment here on Ruby Rose 2 to just reflect a little and have a little look around. I'm going back to London. So this is gonna be the last time that I'm on Ruby Rose 2 for a while. I'll explain why the circumstances around all that in a future episode but it's not for today. Nick is coming back with me but he'll be back to Vietnam very soon so don't worry you know he'll be back filming all of the progress with Ruby Rose 2 and it's like all of you guys I'll be watching it from afar. <laughs> yeah so. I'm gone for two weeks and no she's not pregnant. Oh yeah no that, <laughs> oh yeah I didn't want to be like yeah. so cryptic that people oh, are like. I'm not looking rubbing my belly and then thinking of <laughs> no. Absolutely not. It's far more boring than that, I can assure you. Just taking a moment to just take it all in, you know, we were just saying that we should probably just spend a few minutes to just reflect on the progress that's been made so far and just to be with our new boat. And, uh, you know, I was just thinking how lucky we are that we can be here and watch the entire build. You know, that's an opportunity that not many new owners have. And it is not only very interesting, but it's also going to be hugely helpful for us going forward once we've taken delivery of Ruby Rose 2. It's all very exciting. I'm very excited. I wish that I could stay, but I can't. She's going to look very different the next time I come here and see her. So here we are, 57 horsepower Yanmar all in place. I'm actually quite surprised at how compact this is. It's probably about 20% bigger than the engine on Ruby Rose, actually maybe a little bit less, but it's a small compact unit and I've clearly got about a foot, maybe 18 inches around there. That There's far, far, far more access here, even with the 57 in this engine bay the, to what we had on Ruby Rose. So I've got oil fillers, fuel filters there. There's the stop controls. I can see the basic alternator there. Yep, look, it all looks absolutely superb. And again, I'm surprised also at the, the space that we have to, to work around here. This is actually a really big engine bay. Things to note that this, this will all open up from the outside, but when you've got this open as well, you're also ventilating an engine bay and you're adding a lot of light to it. So that to us is gonna be really useful for maintenance. The other engine is gonna go in this afternoon, but end of this stage that we're moving on to the next stage and I am absolutely pumped to see us finally having engines. So thank you for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Honestly, for us, another like, yeah, pretty crazily happy episode. We'll be back again with more episodes next week. So give us a like, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. It's about there and we'll see you again soon. Goodbye.